How capable do you think you are of being a blessing machine? An instrument of blessing into your world. How many people do you know need your blessing and aren't receiving it because you don't think either that you're good enough to give it or that they'll hear it and know what to do with it or that they'll actually protect you once you give it? That's one of the reasons some people don't extend their blessing is it's a vulnerable thing to bless somebody. You actually extend your love and your heart and your protection and your care to another person and you get one of the those um, don't bug me, I'm busy responses. It's a hard hard hit, but the fact that I have done it and received that and can keep doing it is insurance for you to know it is possible to stay in that flow. And you won't do it like me. You can thank God for that. <laughs> because it's hard to do it if you're not, hard to do it as someone else does it. It's easy to do it as you do it. So I was aware as all that was being generated before me, how much there is um, freedom in being yourself that you can't know until you actually do love who you are as a being. And for those of us who have had any kind of experience in our life that has caused our heart to be wounded or been in situations where people who were responsible for loving us and didn't do it very well. We don't have the trust that who we are, how we're designed, and what we're made up of is quality goods. Anybody else feel that they've had to do a little bit of work on that territory? I certainly have, have felt like, well, if my so-and-so didn't love me, why would anybody else love me? And it doesn't... It doesn't look so black and white when you're a child. You just can't figure it out. You can't figure out why, for example, when your parents are arguing, it's coming out at the kids. I know so many therapists, psychologists, famous Dr. Phil's and Oprah's always say, don't fight, don't fight in front of the kids. It changes them forever. But one of the things that happens is when there's Going back to this lens experience, if your personal experience and the relationship lens you're looking through and the creative field you're in the midst of isn't clear and owned by you, that stuff spreads, that's unclear, spreads everywhere. And children are the biggest sponges in our life, as are the that which is of innocent open heart. And for many of us, myself included, sometimes I have to just get quiet and be still and get the clutter out of my mind and even the clutter off the counter. Do you ever notice how if the desk or the counter is cluttered, you don't think as well? Get a clear space so that I can think clearly. But sometimes I have to do things that actually move me along, which is a bit like being a cheerleader for my own reality, for the own reality of my own sovereign being. Because my mind and my heart can be a bully. And it can tell me that things aren't right, things do not work well, think people don't like you, this is not the right time or the right thing to say. And if you are aware of your own personal lens, that information is incredibly useful. If you're not, you will stop your own radiance into the world because the information doesn't have a place to be understood or be clearly used if prayer is about the radiant expression of yourself through your being into the world, the only way you're going to know how to do that fully is if you learn how to be still enough to hear and to give. <laughs>